Hello and welcome. It is Saturday, 21st day of November 2020. My name is Derek. This is the Money Charts channel. All bets, trades, and other like within each his own risk and their own reward. Oftentimes when failed move in one direction can come fast move in the opposite. Let's uh, take a look at the four hour term time frame first within BTC here. And I mean, there's a lot of things that I see, but really one thing twice, done twice, that I see that's really fascinating. And it might not be that easy for a lot of people to see. We, yeah, we have a run in here, and then we have a nice correctionary move sideways. And that's what it is, but it's not this correctionary move. And it's been in a particularly overall uptrend again that's not what i'm seeing high volatility at different times yeah i don't know that's i don't know if that's it but another good sideways correction then it breaks out we're in another sideways correction but within it one of the things that popped my eyes and when i see this one of the things i think after it is okay this is short shorter term time frames is this looks like a little bit of a failed breakout and this looks like a little bit of a failed a breakdown I do overall like how, I mean, you just see how, like how for several periods, it was closing at 18.646 area. Had a little bit of a move down and it's just recovered it really quickly already. And this overall run does not seem right now as if it is over. But okay, so the failed breakout, I guess, is a 21 stamp last night. Okay. And just the previous hour is where I'm seeing this lower low to this 15 minute chart. An opportunity where it could have broke out last night and never did. And it just took more time for it to do it. Even a little bit of an attempt here in the middle of the morning here, 2, 3 o'clock Eastern time. But with all the support in which it established since its first time it did go there, 12 hours step November 20. Well, that was at 15, 8, 4, 8, 18, 5, 4, 8. And... It was for support exactly a couple times in the area, several times. Even as low down to uh, that of 18.405 and 18.449. But this one undercut them all. And then to recapture it, because when you break through every single layer of support, the big one, ooh, that big one that I mentioned, the first one, and then the whole range area, even got through that. Now you're like, oh my goodness, this is this old uptrend thing. Short term, we're, we're correcting down. Now we got to watch out for this 18 to be resistance and then fall lower. Well, yeah, resistance at the highs and the whole. Wow, what a fantastic several periods. As we can see in this spot here. And then more towards that failed breakdown on the five minute term time frame. Just there is this general area here of big, big lower end support. And if I look at this at the one minute time frame, well, I've already looked at two different exchanges and they both have the exact same price going down there. That happened. That was a very fast recovery. That was not just on the Binance Tether exchange. Some one person with big amount of funds to bring it down 100 bucks or 0.1%. And you need big funds to move it 1.1. Um, on Binance, anyway, with Tether, you do. No, I don't think, no, because the Bitstamp chart, which I was looking at first, showed the same thing. I was looking at that, I'm like, ooh, wow. So what I showed, that was one of the things I thought was worth pointing out. And in such, let me just, because I'm going to have to move to Bitstamp as it is anyway. Let's uh, go and take a look at uh, it, because there we can see here on the one minute time frame, still making this low down here. And all the and the big volume too. So a lot of sellers did come in at 7:03 a.m. and 7:02 as well. But those sellers, they've at that it'd be, wow fast recovery within it, and that's what happens within those monstrous good bull markets. And it doesn't seem to me as if this run is over, um, especially again because of the short term four hour. You see how you have. A move, how do you correct from the up move, sideways move, blah, 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 mad leg higher, but it's corrected it, and then who knows what kind of leg higher it would be, but 
It would need another 1,000 or 5% to reach its all-time previous high of a pair below 20,000 US dollars. As we can see, that's the, that's the level here from middle of December 2017, nearly that of uh, three years or about 35 months. It lifted off, of course, from the 18 average of highs here in October. And we're in now month number five since the breakout and month number seven consecutively up right now. Currently, it's up for the month 17.8%. And for the week, rather, excuse me, for the week, for the month, it's two months up in a row. And I think that's a lame up month, I was thinking, too, when I said those numbers. 36.2% for the month. Previous month, it was up 28. But it was like excitation of the 18 average of highs to me, extremely strong setup. Uh, several periods, five in which it showed strength amongst the 18 average of highs. The first two resisting the highs, the last two supporting it, and the middle one breaking from, from well, to a new elevator shaft higher. These two periods was supporting so much of this resistance in here. And then it's gotten by all of this resistance from like each of these periods on June 1st, blah, blah, blah. And even when back in the old days, it was the uh, has to get above all those high, above all those highs. And oftentimes, I'm not going to be talking about this as a fast move because I said on the intro, oftentimes a failed move is a fast move. It's really a segue because of how I showed the short term one, but I'm going to segue into this one. So you have all of these downtrends. I mean, this the, the downtrends, of course, so passe. So getting above, and every single time you make these highs, oh, we got up to this high of like, say, 11.5 or 11.4, whatever. Then we started to go down. Okay, well, we got to get above that high. Oh, didn't do it here. And every single time it made a, a high after that, it was either the same or lower than the previous one. So it made continuous lower highs or matching highs, mainly lower highs and a lot of matching lows. But what were some of those key highs? Well, this one is like we're way, way, way north of this high. Uh, and I don't didn't mean to draw a line there, but I just meant to uh, move the screen over. But at 18,800, well, this high is even passe at 17.2. I talked about that slot machine 17.7 number. It's been doing well holding and staying above it. There was really uh, three days in which the price action, you even say four, uh, from December 16th through that of uh, December 19th, where the market stayed pretty much above that 17.77 mark. So as far as holding and staying above the most upper end part of it, well, it did four days last time. Now at the 17.7, I guess we're on day number four today. And it's an overall area of weak resistance. And then oftentimes for failed moves can create fast moves in the opposite direction. Okay, key support, 6,000. At least it worked out to be really big. So I'm going to draw this little, little picture thing that I like to do sometimes, and I'm going to do it one of these times. There's the failed breakdown, which then has to be, a, to be a failed breakdown, you need a quick move back into the 18. And not only did it take a quick move, but it almost looked like it was going to do its instant fa fast move higher. I mean, really not, not so much, but it has to recapture itself within the 18 or the correctionary phase, which it does. And then with a, yet another failed breakdown here to just add gravy to the fuel or whatever, add fire to the fuel. Gravy, gravy, let's put the fire out. Let's add gravy to it. No. Anyway. There's the uh, show of the strength breakout. Yeah, this to me looks like the start of the fast move higher. Now let's transition into a few other ones. Next up is Ethereum in at that of $523. And within such, what do we see in May and June? Yeah, strength amongst the 18 highs. And what do we see the next month? A move, a move to test the next level of this resistance. Okay, because yeah, when we say as we're going down, I'm always going to talk about previous highs and lows as key points. So that's the key point from June of 2019. It got up to this month, but within the monthly term, no resistance there. It's also the 50% Fibonacci. Well, no, 50% retracement. I don't know any way. I would like to see if Fibonacci could have 50%. And I mean, halfway from one way or another does work out between the two Fib marks is 50%. So maybe that's the only way, but because anyway, we resist this 18 average. No, no, we resist the 61.8% of highs, come back down to the 18 average of lows and 
this is the classic reversal of trend this is the classic establish a level of resistance come back to a key area where you come from then break that established area now in the early stages of such at least it's just looking that it's attempting to do it it's almost at the early stages it's not quite a clear concise break it but it's pretty damn near close we can see just how well though like within this move we have this great up day on november the second great hold pause day with within and at the near previous highs from the end of august and at the key fibonacci which uh we can see in here was an area where it wasn't able to have that great of support the first time it had one good run and then it just was able to just congest at it for a while now on the first attempt there to correct it as nice as it has you almost got to like give it a like like give it the applause for like wow congratulations but in reality this does tell me that this is a fantastic setup and we should be heading very soon to the uh, next key point of around 788 and two thirds, but Pierce extra, at least 800 is a Pierce extra, even like eight and a quarter to 850 seems more realistic as well as a minimum level. And then from there, okay, what do we do from that point on? Oh, it's a now what situation I'd like to talk about. I don't know what we're going to do next. Maybe we come back down to 475 or maybe go back to previous high at 1300. It's almost coin flip for me when I look at it from this perspective. Now, what would happen that are out there then next? Meaning what would be like, you give me an even odds bet. You, have, you give me the option. I bet one to win one unit. No vague, no rake. And I'm not going to do it. I'm just saying if I had that option and the bets were to come back to here or to the previous high, I don't know what I would do it because I just don't see where an edge would be. But it, that's what I like to call like a now what situation spots where it's like, okay, well, want to look and see how the market reacts because if there's no resistance here, then I know the next key level is previous high. And if we do successfully resist here, if it's weak resistance, we probably won't come back down to here. That's the best we'll come back down to. And uh, But that's the next key level I'd always be looking at. And that's if you're looking to do orders, just hit the, you always play the one way of playing, just put, hit the numbers, put orders as one way of playing at the level. So, okay, you put a sell order here, buy order back here, didn't hit. Then you put a sell order here, and if it comes back here, then so on and so forth. And of course, all your sellers at like 25 bucks and like 65 bucks back in the day, well, they're exhausted and dead. If you sell back in like 187, to be able to get the buy-in back here, all of these sell orders were able to buy back. If you sold out like 313, you probably should have got a buy order back and so on and so forth. But that's just again, how one would trade, that's just one way of looking at it. On the daily term time frame, we can see it came close to hitting this level of Fibonacci here. It most certainly did on November the 11th and then uh, again, a couple days later, pulls back. Even here, uh, getting a nicely piercing above it and pulling back and really supporting, congesting more on the area, not really supporting and resisting combination of both maybe. But a, a classic pure break, a noticeable break of, clear break of this area within yesterday and today's session. And let's finish this off with then ripple against the U.S. dollar in at 41 and a half cents right now. Not that many days ago, it was a little over a quarter. Now it's at 41. Not the greatest of charts here, but I want to use it calculated for uh, using the long-term time frame. But when you're looking at this, the lines, whatever, they don't really mean much, but you can mean a lot. You can see and what you see. You have a move that uh, left the support area of uh, well, at the start of November. It was able to establish and re really retest this level of resistance. But most and more importantly, again, how you showed a lot of the strength on the 18 average of highs on the uh, 14th and 15th, which was just a good prelude to uh, this event. So a fantastic move on the single hour term time frame, breaking it nicely from the 18 average of highs yesterday morning at 7. And this thing has, still hasn't stopped its uptrend yet. We do see here high volume on this, but you know what? That doesn't mean higher volume coming. We could have volume that's 50%, 30% double than that a few hours later. Maybe that is the highest volume. But uh, as it goes, what does this mean more for the longer term? Because I'm really not here to talk too, too much about short term analysis. Oh, maybe I should use the other charts, but no, I don't need to. Head and shoulders pattern inverted. Left. I mean, this is the head area. This is the right area. So what are the key areas it's got to get? You got wrist resistance. We got this resistance. We got this resistance. See about 33 cents. 
as far as support, I'm just going to go down and say 12. So that's almost a triple move. So if I want to do like the di direction of this move and do a matching part of this, then what's triple from this? Well, that would be like a dollar. And then if it's a good portion, I'm like, how about 61% of it or 60% of this? Or maybe it goes up to about 75, 80 cents is one possibility. However, re regardless of the situation, the market did leave this correctionary mode in here, establish at least whether it was it, not go to a level of resistance. It didn't establish because it was well, 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 well established, biggest support before. So it resisted key support, resisted this resistance. And then come back to correctionary phase and boy did it ever. So I've talked about reversal of st stage, stage before so many times in the past. Stage one, let the band flatten out. Stage two, establish an area of resistance. Stage three, have a correctionary move. That's why I like to use the 18 average. And then stage four, break establish. It's done everything so obviously easy to read here. And then have a clear break of established resistance, which it has done, which means that this is a bull market within the weekly term time frame. That cannot be said, at least not as of yet, within the monthly chart, and it's most certainly not in a bear market. It's in a neutral market. Correctionary move within a bull market. Those are the two that I can put it. And what a fantastic move this was to go from a half a penny up to about $3. So a move to a dollar, any type of move, is still just going to be a little bit of retracement from key low to key high. You know, I'm just going to do some Fibonacci here. Didn't think about doing it, but it's, it's obvious when I see a chart like this. Key high, key low. Where does the next high happen to be? And what's the high from this? And I'm going to calculate this. But I'm going to draw the lines on a different exchange. I just want to know what the exact low is. So I'll use the uh, Binance then. But I got more data here because I want to look at this data in here. And then another way of looking at upside is high. I like high divided by somewhere down in here, the 61.8% retracement uh, to the root of 1.618, multiply the same number again, and that would be a number, nice break higher. It's a break higher above that, upside Fibonacci. Not going to calculate that, though. At least not today. I mean, in time, I might have to, and I hope to have to. But th that's what you look at for. I mean, right now, we're talking about retracement mode from here to here. And then if we can get past retracement mode, we can then move into upside mode. But until then, it's attempting to do retracement mode. This is the first time it's getting above the 18 average of highs on the monthly term time frame since the uh, major highs of the uh, start of 2018. So leave that, I mean, take that for what it's worth after three very productive periods that preceded it within the 18 average band. At least, okay, productive, nothing majorly obvious, fantastically. Oh, well, like I mentioned with like, well, Bitcoin. I mean, I was in so many others in the past that have looked so magnificent. It looks good. But the, again, the fact that it's looking this way, and I've even the fact that Bitcoin's got 20,000, as, as I've been mentioning before, if Bitcoin goes, and I think it's when, 25, 30, 40,000 plus, I do believe that the altcoins, like it was the case in 2017, will overperform Bitcoin. So Bitcoin goes from 20 to 100, 5x move. Coins like Ripple from that point on will do, from its best lows to highs, will do much, much better, like 10, 20, 30x to its, when I say hot best highs, moving forward. Um, okay, then. So let's uh, take a look at this on uh, a different exchange. And I'm going to use the bit stamp exchange for this one. High divided by low. This is the high. This is the low. To the exponents of, well, it's going to come up with 23.6, 38.2, 61.8, and 76.4. So it is the high on this market. The high is $3.31, and then three-fifths after that. 331.7 pennies. The low in here, 11.4 pennies. Big, big, high divided by low differential. That makes the first level of Fibonacci, that of a 23.6 level again, that's 25 cents, which is well past. So um, I'm not gonna round these pennies after like, I mean, I mean, I know I can get a better number if I could find its decimal after that, but it's fine. But what we can see in here 
is that this level of um, from the low was an area that it, this is one of those odd situations because I'd be like so surprised here on April the 29th. I'd be looking at it saying, why the hell heck didn't we end up going to this level of resistance? And then to have this kind of pullback, but the move just happened later and the actual overall story what was all said and done is that it was an area of major support from like the start of September all the way to the start of November, so for two months. And the next level of resistance is where we are. 41 cents. So here we are, test time. I know I'm thinking this right now, I'm gonna make a big, big sale right now. I probably should, but I'm not going to. I mean, I have sold a little bit of it for my normal pair trading, but, and it's already pierced extra too. Now, according to this, we can see on Bitstamp that volumes are starting to break in. So let's keep, let's keep that in mind too. It's just the Bitstamp exchange too though. But although it's a pretty good one though for uh, nonetheless, I think as well. But that is a 38.2% correction at a 61.8 level. That would come in at 92 cents. So therefore, if we do have any break of this 41 cent handle, then I'd be looking for that of a little better than a 100% gain or a move to such, and really a dollar. I mean, piercing extra, eight cents more. I mean, it's like pretty much, I mean, even a buck, a buck oh five is barely piercing extra. But yeah, a dollar would be my next key level. 76.4%. I got it written at a buck fifty three, but it's calculated at a buck fifty. And again, it's probably gonna get north of that number if it gets to that test anyway, because way more often than not, these markets seem to pierce extra. But left shoulder, head, right shoulder, again, more towards that inverted head and shoulders pattern. But and also you look at market. Uh, key high, key low, key high, key high, significant move. And I've talked so much in the past as well, not so much lately, about using like the three bears reference, where in that story, everything had to be just perfect, couldn't be too small, too big, too hot, too cold. Well, I mean, for trading, I do like to, things to be up too much. But um, for moves, a lot of times I'm trying to find moves, I guess you could say. That's the, ice, that's the likelihood. That's the way I like to look at it. And this is like a perfect move in that sense. Because if we're just going to be breaking these resistance at like 37.5, I mean, that's not up enough from this level of resistance. And if we go way, way up to 60 cents, well, now the overextension is starting to become really big. But there's another, that's another chapter when you have overextension. Thus, and then again, it looks, it looks to me, if I connect this high, this high, and this side, that we got the uptrend lines that are, I mean, this line, this line, and that, all three lines would probably match well. But if you have, like, move where it goes to, like, 55, 56, you'd break that uptrend line. Again, whole new chapters within the situation. Thank you for tuning in. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.